think about Appalachia in general, no earthquakes, no hurricanes, no raging forest fires, temperate climate, we have four seasons a year, farmland and houses that are affordable, but it's not the wasteland that the media and other people portray. This very building reminds me of how many iterations that this area has gone through from the first time it was built for um, a railroad town, a river town, and uh, logging, and then coal mining later. And that's how the town keeps re-evolving, I believe. Where we're sitting today is totally been reimagined from anything that I could ever think of. I did not have a microbrewery in a small town of 900 people or less sitting here in the town of St. Paul. And a lot of folks would say, um, who's going to come to that? Not everybody is a beer drinker because we have a church on every corner. But we're looking for other people to come here and have an experience so we can tell them our story. We need to be telling the story of the people of Southwest Virginia. Their history of population diversity is the most interesting part of their culture because at one time, Cofield Appalachia was the biggest melting pot in the nation. I can relate because my mother was born and raised in a coal camp and, and I kind of grew up in a coal camp in Dank, Virginia. A lot of people think, well, it should be Dante, but it is Dante, but because there's a, a Greek engineer that laid it out in the early 1900s, and about 4,000 people lived in and around Dante, and there was immigrants uh, and, and sharecroppers there. Actually, at the time, the publisher that owned uh, the Washington Post owned it. And he was a terrible coal miner, so he turned it over to um, George Lafayette Carter, who bought him out for just $100 an acre. And then that Virginia entrepreneur set up Clinchfield Coal Companies, Clinchfield Railroad, VICC, Carter Coal Company, and created thousands of jobs in the coal fields of, of uh, Virginia and in West Virginia. So uh, we're proud of that history. Of course, those of us here left in Southwest Virginia, we see the beauty of what we had. Beautiful culture, a blended culture, and their thumbprint and their fingerprints are all over how we function uh, as a culture here in Southwest Virginia. We're a beautiful people. This little town we're in, St. Paul, Virginia, it's changed a lot just because forward-thinking people, particularly what we call the uh, female mafia of St. Paul, <laughs> have made so much improvement to the town and turned it from a real declining town to a tourist attraction. We've uh, promoted the Clinch River, 100 miles of trails that we have uh, here for ATVs, hiking and biking, the new state park, Clinch River State Park. So I think it's a big first step into the coal fields of Virginia. St. Paul's like an outpost. Every town has its story in the world, but I would challenge anybody to be more colorful than their history uh, when you really dig into it. It's a beautiful thing that when we can share stories and we can reminisce, but when we can look forward and think about forward things and how we're going to change things, and one of the things that I've always said is, if we don't keep recovering ourselves and reinventing, then we're standing still. And so when you take a place like this and, and St. Paul as a whole, we're pivoting and we're rethinking about how we do business. We're rethinking about how we live our lives. And I think we're coming back to a time when, hey, it's, life is pretty good in the holler. 